When I started learning web development, I had to learn pretty much everything on my own. And the most frustrated thing that I had to face was to piece each and every bit of information that I could obtain to understand a single concept. And that was pretty painful. So fast forward one year, here I am trying to make a crash course on web development to help you guys who want to learn web development but have no clue on where to start. So guys, here's a crash course on web development the easy way. So once again, this is Kamal and let's get this started. Alright, so the first question that comes to mind when you think of this topic is, what does web development actually mean? So in simple terms, what it means is that you're going to design a website and then you're going to deploy that website onto the internet from where any person on the earth can access that. So essentially, we are going to create a website first using the following languages. So we have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in the front end and PHP and MySQL in the back end. Don't worry about that for now. I'm going to explain it later. But these are the languages that we are going to essentially use. By using these languages, we are first going to create a website. Then we are going to place the files regarding that website onto a server from where the user can access it. So what is a server? A server is essentially a computer, except it doesn't have a keyboard monitor or a mouse. Instead, it has a very powerful processor along with a high speed internet connection. So anytime a person tries to look for a website, those files have to be present somewhere or somewhere in the server. And when you type that website in the URL bar, automatically those files are fetched from the server and displayed on your screen. So these server are like a storage place where you can actually store the files and you can access those files related to, the, to that particular website. Okay. So when it comes to web development, it can actually be broadly classified into two parts. The first one is the front end and the second one is the back end. So in the front end, we have actually three languages mainly. So those are HTML, CSS and JavaScript. In the back end, we have PHP and MySQL. So what is front end? So front end is essentially the part that is visible to the person that is using that website. Whereas back end deals with the process of uh, retrieving the information from the front end and storing it somewhere or doing some process on that uh, information. Okay. So that's the back end part. In the front end, we are actually going to learn the three languages, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Along with that, we're going to learn bootstrap. So what is bootstrap? Bootstrap is a library. It simplifies the amount of code that you have to write for HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So before getting more technical, let's first see what front end is. So front end is a part that is visible to the user itself, right? So let's say you uh, type in Facebook in any of your favorite browser and what you see on the screen at first when you open the Facebook page is what we deal in the front end part. So the design part that you see in the facebook.com is what is dealt with the front end. Whereas, uh, let's say your account information, like your passwords, your group chat, or all of that information is dealt by the backend. So in front end, we have the three languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? So think of a human being. Uh, let's say a human being has a core skeletal structure, right? Similarly, a website also has a skeletal structure. And that skeletal structure is defined by using the language HTML. So every website that you have visited till now, or you may visit in the future, that will actually be coded by the HTML part. So the main structure or the main data to be placed in the uh, shown on the website is being designed or defined by HTML. So next we have CSS. So for the core skeletal structure, we are going to add some styling properties. Let's say it's like adding or uh, wearing a dress by a human being. Similarly, the uh, CSS part is going to add some styling to the HTML. So like uh, the bare bone structure of HTML is not that good to look. So we are going to use the CSS to add some colors and make it pop. So next we have the JavaScript. So the JavaScript is like the brain of the front end. So the HTML and CSS are not programming languages. So you can't actually do any logic or code any logic in that. Whereas JavaScript is a programming language and you can actually use logic to define some animations or user interactivity. Okay. So that interactivity and everything is being defined by JavaScript. So these are the three languages in front end. 
So to simplify the things or to simplify the amount of code that you're going to write to reduce that code, we're going to use a framework called Bootstrap. Not essentially a framework, but a library. So Bootstrap is an open source library for HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And what it's going to do is that it's going to reduce the amount of code that you have to write for these three languages. And to clarify things, we are not going to learn uh, JavaScript itself. We are just going to use Bootstrap, okay? So we are going to learn HTML and CSS, whereas JavaScript is not required by beginners, okay? So it's not necessary to learn JavaScript to create a simple website, okay? You can actually use the JavaScript from Bootstrap, which is actually much simpler than JavaScript itself. So uh, this Bootstrap is actually created by Twitter. So it's free for everyone. It's an open source library, so anyone can use it. So that's the front end part. Then next we have the back end. So as I mentioned earlier, all the information regarding the user, like data, like let's say his username, his password, his account information, and all of that information, which is to be stored somewhere and which has to be retrieved, that information is being dealt by the back end part. So essentially in the back end we have two languages. One is PHP, the second one is MySQL. So MySQL deals with the databases. So this PHP is what connects the front end part to the back end database. So let's say you want to retrieve the information from the front end and use that information for doing some operations onto the database. Then the PHP is what is used there. Okay. So it's going to take the information and do some operations or let's say it's, it's going to give that information to the database itself so that the database can do the operations by its own. So next we have the MySQL. MySQL or MySQL, something like that, whatever you might prefer to call it. This language is used to make the changes to the database itself. So uh, let's say you create a row in the database or insert some data into the database or uh, delete the data from the database. All of that can be done by using MySQL, whereas PHP is going to retrieve the data to be stored into the MySQL. OK, so that is the front end and the back end part. Okay guys, so before winding off, let me clarify a few things for you. So we are going to learn HTML and CSS here. We are not going to use JavaScript. Instead, we are going to use Bootstrap. Okay. And uh, for the backend, we are going to learn PHP and MySQL. Along with that, I'm going to release two videos every week. So the first video will contain the crash course itself. Whereas the second video is going to contain a mini project using the uh, things that you have learned in the first video. Let's say this is the first week, then I'm going to explain to you HTML part. In the second video, we are going to use that HTML knowledge to create a mini project. Okay. So similarly, the following week, we are going to have two videos and so on. So this crash course will contain two videos every week. And by the end of this crash course, you're going to have around three or four mini projects by implementing every language that you're going to learn. Okay. So that's it for this crash course, guys. So I'm pretty much excited to teach all of these things to you. So if you have any comments or if you have any queries, then please use the comment section below and I'm going to reply as soon as possible. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoy this crash course and see you in the next video.